This is episode 11 of the Lifestylepreneur podcast. And my guest today is Andrea Ball, and she's going to teach you how to create an effective content marketing strategy to generate sales. Welcome to the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Gilbertson, and I'm an author, speaker, and a coach to teaching you how to launch your own successful podcast. And the reason I designed this show is to bring you the top lifestyle entrepreneur experts from all over the world for them to share their key strategies that they've used to launch their own businesses and allow them to live life on their own terms. So tune in every Friday for new episodes and come on over and join the Lifestyle Entrepreneur community at www.lifestyleacademy.com. There you're going to receive VIP training from specific guests from the podcast, along with being able to watch all of the interviews. And I'll also be making it really easy for you to implement these strategies that you're hearing by sending you what I like to call the lifestyle cliff notes on the best of the best lessons learned on the podcast. So let's get started. All right. So before we get started with the show, I just want to thank everyone who is subscribing and leaving awesome reviews in iTunes. I'm so excited that people are enjoying these interviews and I'm excited to announce first Fridays. So what I'm going to be doing the first Friday of every month, we're going to have a raffle for ever, for those of you that have subscribed to the podcast and then also left a review and it'll be a raffle for $25 gift cards from iTunes, Amazon, eBay, all over the place. So all you simply need to do is just subscribe to the podcast in iTunes and then leave us a review and your name will go on ahead and we'll announce that the first Friday of every month. Well, welcome. I'm really excited for today's guest where we're going to go over specifically how to get set up with social media. So I'm bringing on Andrea Ball, who is a social media consultant and speaker, and she's super passionate about helping businesses understand and how to leverage the power of social media to actually grow their business. Um, and Andrea, she's the co-author of Facebook Marketing All-in-One for Dummies, and she and she was the community manager for over two years for Social Media Examiner, which is one of the largest networks out there for social media. And so she also uh, uses her improv comedy skills to blog as a slightly cranky character known as Grandma Mary. Um, and so she's, she's just absolutely a blast to work with, and she's really known as a social media edutainer which I think you're going to love today. <laughs> so welcome, Andrea. How are you? Thanks so much, Chris. Good, good. Yeah, I think it's way more fun to laugh and learn because this is all kind of overwhelming for a lot of people and it's just more fun to have fun, right? Absolutely. I mean, we learn better then, we can implement yeah. and have fun with it. So well, tell us your story. How did you get started and how did you become the expert in the social media space? Yeah, so I uh, started a, a while back uh, when Twitter was fairly new, Facebook was kind of just beginning, um, and I was a, uh, I'd been laid off from my job, and which was actually kind of relevant because it's, I was working as a tech support person, and so I love the combining of tech support, you know, technical and, and customer service and all that kind of thing together. So I think that's always been my passion in helping people understand how to do something technical. So um, online, offline, wherever. So I was, um, it worked out great because I was staying at home with my one-year-old son, but I just always had to do something. I was kind of just one of those types that just uh, needed Busy. something. So I uh, had an in-home wine tasting business, which let me tell you, that was like my dream job right there. <laughs> Go to people's houses, drink wine, you know, that's, make some money. <laughs> that's the lifestyle. I love it. <laughs> it was. It was great. <laughs> so it was going really well. And I would st got started on Twitter to help market my business. And I was like really blown away with the power of using it. And I w really saw right away how how it could really help you increase your reach online, really brand yourself online, and I was really loving it. And I was also helping some of my other entrepreneur friends uh, get started with it. They're like, oh, can you teach me how to do that? And I was blogging and all kinds of little stuff like that. So <clears throat> um, then as I was seeing the success of it, the company who supplied the wine went out of business. So I was really bummed about that. Um, but what I noticed along my journey as I was learning how to use all these social media tools is that there's a lot of tutorials out there that were really boring. They were just so dull or they were taught by some 
25 year old dude, dude in a hoodie with, you know, using all the like lingo and skipping all the steps and, you know, kind of wasn't giving the full step by step tutorial that I wanted to see. So I thought, you know what, I want to, I'm going to start my own thing. I'm going to do, do my own thing. I'm going to start a blog to help other people learn how to use social media and, but I'm going to make it fun. I'm going to make it funny. And I'm going to incorporate my love of wearing wigs. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to go with your passions. You people. have to go with your passions, no matter what they are. <laughs> I love <Exactly>. it. <laughs> so I also do, you know, I also was doing um, improv comedy on the side and uh, was, you know, had, had a lot of fun characters with that. But I decided that one of my characters would do my blogging for me to make it like a little more fun, a little, you know, hopefully more accessible Mm -hmm. by, you know, making it fun. So I thought Grandma Mary was the perfect choice of the characters I had. And her motto is, if Grandma Mary can do it, you can do it too. So she, (laughs) you know, she does get a little cranky. She's allowed to say some of the stuff that I don't get to say about, you know, (laughs) and they get a little cranky about all the changes and things because it's hard. it's you know hard to keep up. It's hard to know what to do, and a lot of times it's just <clears throat> hard to figure everything out. So, so she started her blog, and it caught on really well. I was getting mm-hmm. lots of traffic. People were you know kind of sharing my stuff. I was um, you know getting a lot of hits to my hits to my site and and growing my social sites as well. And kind of one of the things that was really interesting is that I connected with Phyllis Kerr, who is one of the co-authors of the book online. We were. We were on social media. We were watching a Ustream show every week, and I was on there as Grandma Mary. My original intent was to never reveal who I was. I was always going to be Grandma oh, really? Mary. And, okay. uh, and uh, then it got people were like, what are you doing? <laughs> you <know? laughs> who are you? Who is really? Who are you? Really? What's your deal? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so I had a little coming out. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, I connected with Phyllis, and we, we connected. We hit it off, and we, you know, uh, were retweeting each other's stuff and, and things like that. And she was the one who was actually connected to Wiley, the publisher of the Dummies series book. And she was pitching them on this Facebook marketing all in one book. And they said, okay, this looks great, but we really need someone with a, you know, good platform as well as a co-author because the book is 700 pages right. when we really like a team of three. So so she said, well, how about Grandma Mary? She's got a great, you know, following. And, and they took a look and said, okay. So I like to say that I'm my own social media success story because you never know where your social media contacts are going to lead. You really don't. You, yes. you're, con- you're out there connecting and talking to people and you can connect with the perfect joint venture partner. It doesn't have to always be your perfect client. You know, some people get this tunnel vision like they just ha- always have to connect with the very perfect people and they want they they don't want to talk to anyone else, but right. you know, really you just never know who's going to be your advocate, your fan and mm-hmm. a connection for you to to help you grow into something bigger. Yeah. So it was, it was really great. Well, it's a, such a phenomenal story. And I love that because I love the age with social media now is because there's a lot of transparency and you can really put yourself out there and have, you know, people find you for who you are and attract your audience that way. You don't have to be so narrow and specific because you never know right. what's going to, and they're all about sharing too. So it may not be that right. person, but then they say, Hey, you really should connect with, have you checked this person out? I mean, yeah. I, I just love it. It's a, just yeah. amazing how we can really connect today. So yeah. what, what about some roadblocks to success? Because we all, I think this ocean of social media, I've been there. I think every entrepreneur has been there where we're yeah. overload. Yeah. So talk about some of the things you had to overcome, overcome to be yeah. successful. Yeah, well, it, you know, I started really slow. I had I had kids at home. I mm-hmm. I was blogging for a while before really trying to kick it up a notch um, because I wanted to have a lot of good content out there before trying to monetize. And but I did actually create a product pretty quickly and put it out there, which I highly recommend. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, what? I don't know what you're, I don't know what this is, this what. And even when I was starting my blog, it was really intimidating. I thought, oh man, everyone's already got a blog. You know, you think that like, yeah, everyone, you do. I'm starting from scratch and everyone's already way ahead of me, but it yeah. doesn't matter. You know, y- you can be, uh, you know, you can be 
anything you want. I've seen people rock it up to success mm -hmm. just by putting in, you know, a ton of effort. And it does take consistent effort. A lot of people want to have, you know, this immediate success right away. And it is, it's a long journey. It and is. It's, it's really challenging. But don't give up. That's my, I just really do not, do not give up. If you just keep consistent, being out there, connecting with people, mm -hmm. you're going to have success. And be pa if you're passionate about what you do, you're going to have success. And it, it's daunting because when I was, I, I was like, didn't know what a blog was. And I was like trying to like, you know, blog. And I was thinking, oh, oh this looks terrible. And, you know, it, you just make these baby steps yep. and you keep, you know, you just keep progressing and progressing and you realize, oh, wow, now I know how to do this so quickly and so easily. It's mm -hmm. second nature. And you can then ratchet it up, six, you know, even more and, and really put yourself out there in a bigger, bigger way. Yeah. It, yeah. And it really does. It starts to snowball because once you get into it and then you start to figure out how everything, how the spokes work and how right. the, the system actually goes. So right. let's talk about that because I think yeah. a lot of business owners today, they realize they need to be starting to use content and right. they need to be on the social networks for their business. Right. But where do they start? Right. So why don't, I'd love for you to share because you're brilliant at this, like you, you, the plans and how you help um, with your consultancy and then your, your information products. Yeah. So let's talk about the basics, the one-on-one -on -one of social media and how to get started. Yeah. I mean, I think really just assess where you're at. What I like to do is just take a good stock of what, what assets you have right now. If you are starting straight from scratch, you don't have a blog, you don't have a Facebook page, you don't have, you have nothing, then I would start with the content plan because content right now, content is huge. Having that content, drawing people to your site via uh, visitors, and then also having stuff for people to share is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, people aren't going to just share your website like, oh, you know, it's not like a little brochure that they're going to, you know, share I don't think with we everybody. ever had days like that. <laughs> <laughs> know, right? Look at this awesome website. Right, it's please share. The, yeah, but it's content. About, about page. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> please share my about page. <laughs> So, so, you know, just start with a content plan, write down 20 posts that you can write, you know, and then figure out how to put those in place. And when I first started my blog, I was blogging two and three, sometimes four times a week, uh, you know, just really getting the content up there. And then what you can do is then you can start cross-referencing the content and, you know, kind of massaging the con content into categories. And, you know, figuring out your true topics that you want to teach people and always keep in mind what is in it for the audience. You know, tr you know, hopefully you're trying to teach someone or you're trying to um, give out some helpful tips or you are, you know, entertaining in some way. So figure out what your true purpose is and why someone would even share your content. Think about the kinds of things you share things like that. So, so start, I like to start with the content and then move into the social sites so that you can start figuring out how to build those up mm -hmm. and, and start small. Like, you know, when I first started, I just really started only with Facebook and Twitter and, and I still really focus mostly on those two, you know, uh, areas. I, I didn't, I haven't gotten into Pinterest. Every time I go to Pinterest, it's like two hours gone. I'm like, Whoa, what happened? There? I'm getting addicted over there too. I'm like, Whoa. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's great. It's, well, we're image based, but well, let's back up for a second. Why Facebook and Twitter? Those are the two sites that have the most traffic, and that's where a lot of people spend time. Although, you know, it could be LinkedIn. So pick two of the, you know, pick two of the big three. That's what I like to do. Is some people hate Twitter, and they want to focus on Facebook and LinkedIn, and that that's great. Just focus there, right. um, so, you know, or vice versa. Uh, Facebook is still the biggest social site out there, so it's hard to ignore that one completely. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I completely agree with that. Um, and so what I'd like to talk about then is let's say we're into the next step. So, cause obviously we want a hub. Cause I think what happens, people get frustrated and I did, I made this mistake at first. I didn't really have a base and I was just using Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, but it wasn't bringing them home. 
Because right. you need the, that. That's what the, the funnel is. Right. So I love how you talk about build your, your home base first and then incorporate the social network. So for right. companies that already have that in place and they know they need to start getting their content out there more to drive traffic back, let's talk about the strategy specifically on Facebook and Twitter that you use to really, because I think the, the biggest, you know, the, the biggest uh, question is what about the ROI, the ROI yeah. of social media? So yeah. let's just talk about the traffic because that's the first step piece of the, yeah. the puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you know, for... ROI, you really need to understand what your goals are. Is it traffic? Is it email subscribers? Is it, you know, just follower growth, you know? So yeah. set up your goals so you know what your goals are and then and then you can determine if your ROI is there. So um, so let's talk about how you start growing those. Um, basically, you want to just look at, you know, do a little research first, uh, figure out how your competitors are using it. Figure out how complementary businesses are using it. Mm. So go into uh, make some lists on, like, say, five competitors or people you feel like are sort of competing with you. They don't have to be really direct competitors, but people that you consider are, um, you know, people who are doing a good job in social media right now at this time who are in your niche. Take a look at what they're doing. Take a look at um, their kind of engagement and interaction and follower count, fan count, all that stuff, and kind of assess where they're at and see what they're doing well. Then what you want to do is also take a look at some people you admire. Like, I mean, so it could be people who aren't competitors but who are also doing social media well take a look at what they're doing, how they're doing it. Right. And I like using a real broad cross section. Don't just look at people who are kind of experts in social media because that's, you know, of course they're going to be doing it really, really well. But, exactly. but do, mm -hmm. look at what's happening in, in your industry or like industries like you and see, see how things are working for them. So you can kind of set some real realistic goals because right. if you you know say oh I'm gonna you know Mari Smith has a hundred thousand fans and I want a hundred thousand fans well you know exactly so that you know if you're a, a real estate agent in a town of 10,000 I don't think that's really <laughs> it may not be realistic so um, so then yeah just start out setting some goals and saying okay I want to have a uh, hundred followers this month uh, you know 400 followers in the next three months or however it might be and, and plot out a course on how you're going to get there. How, what kind of activity are you going to do that is going to set you on that path? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's, I have some worksheets that really kind of outline all of that, you know, goal planning, goal setting, and then tracking and measurement and kind of some predictions as well. So you can kind of see, is this realistic? That's so brilliant. And I love that because you're reverse engineering. What's the main goal? And then what to do? Because I think that's the missing part is people just aren't quite sure what to actually be doing. And they right. get started, they do it a couple of weeks, and then they're like, this isn't working. I know. And, exactly. and that's the, the opposite. If yeah. I mean, it's, it is long term, but you yeah. can still have milestones and successes as you sure. go. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I like to tell people social media is really farming. You know, you yeah. are planting the seeds that will grow into customers down the road. Mm -hmm. And it could be tomorrow. You know, I've had that happen where I've had, I've, I've um, told people, okay, you know, sometimes people get overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, here's all you have to do this week is just go connect with 20 new people on LinkedIn. That's all you, that's the only thing you have to do. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> right. and, and it's developed into customers. They're, they call me and they're like, oh my gosh, I got a client just from that. I'm like, yep. there you go. That works. But, you know, a lot of times you are connecting with your warm market, reminding them what you do just by doing those kind of connections. Mm -hmm. And and other times the, the germination is a little longer. It takes like a year or two years of them getting to know you and yep. getting to see what kind of content you provide, realizing you're the expert. And and they align with you and and want to do business with you. Yeah, and it, it's and the power of the content that I, I really want people that are listening to understand that maybe aren't quite there yet on content because I didn't get that at first. I was like, oh, I need a blog every day. What this is so time consuming. I don't understand it. But now that I have a consistent content 
content out there. I mean, the study, and this was at Social Media Examiner, the event, I can't remember who said it and what the what the report was, but it's now 10 times that people need to connect with you with yeah. your content before they make a decision to yeah. buy from you. Yeah. And this actually just happened to me. I had a woman that had been listening to my podcast a year ago that now emailed me and said, okay, now I'm ready. Now I get it. I've yeah. been listening to you long enough. So you never right. knew where that sales cycle is. Exactly. But that content enables you to leverage your time then because it's yeah. out there. So I want you to talk a little bit more about what type of content people should be putting on the social networks. Yeah, that's great. So I like to really keep a mix of content because you can't blog every day. My gosh, right? Well, we've got things to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want a life too. <laughs> I know. Right? That's why we're doing that's this. Too much task. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but you know, you can if you have a regular blog schedule. I like to definitely try and blog at least once a week, and I'm trying to do that a little bit more now. Um, and and blog a couple times a week, but I like to vary the content a little bit. Mm -hmm. So one is a more in-depth uh, in depth post that really goes in-depth. And I got scared when I was first doing this. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't give everyone all my tips. Oh, this is terrible. No, I got to hold some back mm -hmm. so that um, they, you know, they have some reason to come and hire me. And the thing that is totally opposite that I found is that the more I give away, the more people want to come and connect with me. I'm like, I just told you how to do this, all of this in this blog post, but they want it personalized for you. So, exactly. you know, don't be afraid of, of giving away a lot of good content and a lot of good tips. Mm -hmm. So, you know, have a really in-depth post from time to time. Maybe you decide that you can only do a post like that once a month. And, um, you know, at Social Media Examiner, the minimum word count on their posts are a thousand words. Mm -hmm. It, they They're are meaty. a long post. <laughs> yeah, Ex well, they are, exactly. But I, what I also love about them is that they incorporate a lot of images. Mm -hmm. Images are so important now. Even if your your business may not be a, a good way, you know, may not have a natural way to incorporate images, figure out a way to do it. There's some great sites out there that have really inexpensive uh, stock photography. Mm -hmm. I use 123rf.com. Love it. Okay. It's like uh, less than a dollar a photo. And um, there's also all kinds of sites that you can do co uh, Creative Commons with where you just have to give attribution to the photo and it's free. Yep. So there's lots of great, great ways to find some sort of visual piece to your uh, blog post. The other thing that's great to do is videos because that totally helps people connect with you and mm -hmm. people are like, no, I don't want to get on camera. I don't like how, you know, my hair looks or something, whatever. Um, but you know, you know, you're, if you're a business person doing business with people, say you're at a network meet, networking meeting, it's sort of, I mean, it's similar. You don't like go, not go to the meeting because you don't like your hair or something. Or you, don't like the way you, you don't like the way you talk, you know? I'm like, yeah. I don't like the way I talk. I'm not going to that meeting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love how you so, put that though. So, so true. Yeah. So, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to watch your own videos. You know, maybe you do a little bit to do a little editing, but is if you as you do it more and more you'll get more and more comfortable with it and it really helps bond people to you i know that a lot of people come up and they're like i feel like i know you already mm -hmm. and because they've listened to me over and over yeah. or if they feel like they know grandma maybe sometimes a little bit <laughs> but it's it's a great that's a great um uh type of content to add um and maybe just even some personal posts as well and people think well i don't want to i don't want to do a personal post, but again, that does help people get to know you. Right. So it's okay to add some personal uh, touch to your blog posts, even if you're a larger company. You know, let people know who's doing the blogging behind behind that, um, so they can kind of get to know the people within the company. They'll feel like they're putting a face with your brand. Exactly. I mean, I think it's even more important at the larger level because yeah. people people today, I really feel, are, don't want to be on the outside anymore. They want to be inside with the brands, being a part of it because we're so connected in the social networks now so that opening up even just a little bit uh, can really do wonders for, for that connection level. So right. I think that's just brilliant. Great tips. Now, what do you suggest for where should business owners be? Like, how do they choose what networks they should be using. Because I love yeah. the two. Just use two. Yeah. Don't overwhelm yourself. Yeah. But how do they choose? 
Yeah, that I that is such a great question because so many people ask that all the time. How do I pick? I'm a B two B. Do I you know should I be on LinkedIn? Do I even just ignore Facebook or whatever? Right. You know, people have these preconceived no- notions that oh B two C belongs here and B two B belongs on Google Plus and you know those kinds of things. I really feel like I have seen almost every single type of business do every form of social media well in some way. Mm -hmm. So I tell people to pick what you like because if you don't like Twitter and someone tells you, no, you have to tweet and you hate it, you're, it's going to come through. You're not going to, you're not going to like it. It's going to be awkward. You're going to, you know, you're going to dread it. It's supposed to be fun. (laughs) So, you know, you got it, you got it, um, focus on the, on what you're going to enjoy. So pick, two that you like. If you don't like any of them, then you're kind of host. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's, um, I think sometimes people, if they realize the, the value of it, then they like it more because they're like, ah, I can see that ROI happening. So right. it's important to make sure you've got like the tracking in place so that you can understand and see that you're making progress because people don't feel like they're, they're like, oh, I'm talking to crickets. No one's answering me. I, and you can say, yeah, but look, you know, behind the scenes in Facebook, no one's commenting on your posts, but there's a lot of clicks on it. So there's a lot of lurkers who are actually reading it. And, right. and you know, you don't know that. So you have to kind of watch, make sure you know which, which stats to watch. That's really important too, because a lot of people, they are, they're sitting on the fence, they're waiting to see if you're going to stay around and you're not just going to disappear. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's really important. And also, I liked your point too about picking something that you you resonate with, that you're going to, because this is about bringing your personality to the forefront or someone in your company or bringing your brand more personable. So right. find the platforms. I do, I'm curious though, because you also hear the other debate that is go where your customers are hanging out, whether it's yeah. Twitter or that. So what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, really, that's, that is true too. That is a concern too. So if you love Google Plus and none of, you know, you absolutely, absolutely know that none of your customers are there, I mean, you'd have to do a lot of research to figure that out if there's absolutely no one there. Right. But a lot of, you know, or maybe you're on Reddit or, you know, and you love Reddit, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, no one's really hanging out no, there a lot, yeah. you know, <laughs> like you're, especially if your market is like, you know, 65 plus, you know, <laughs> There will be crickets. Not not on Reddit. (laughs) So, you know, you do have to do some research. But I think that a lot of businesses do have a good cross-section. And there might be a bigger market, say, on on Facebook than some of the others. So hopefully you are paying attention to that a little bit. But, you know, um, it's a blend. Well, and I think the, the the main ones that are so established now, if you just create a, a content strategy that works, you're going to be able to to reap the benefits with it right. for consistency. Exactly. So, what what are some what do you what are the mistakes you see people making that they can avoid? Yeah, Grandma needs to get out. She'll she'll tell you exactly what what people are doing wrong. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she actually she did have a post about the seven deadly. Deadly sins, according to Grandma Mary on Facebook. So I love it. We'll have links to that too. We'll yeah, put that yeah, in the show yeah, notes because they're that. great. <laughs> but um, you know, basically, it's really a lot of you know, kind of a half-done profile. You want to make sure your profile is maximized. I have a couple of great posts on that. The seven seven deadly f- sins is good, but also you know some some good tips on you know putting your links to your site in constructive places that are going to drive traffic. Um, you know, spamming, of course, is always a terrible one. You don't just go and put your website address, come check me out on everyone's Facebook page. Right. You don't, don't uh, at tag everybody and, you know, with uh, stuff that's not relevant to them. You don't, you don't uh, DM people with your new, you know, special deals or whatever. You, you know, you got to connect first before you try and sell people. So, right. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of the a lot of the kind of no nos, um, and then there's also the bigger no nos on doing things like buying fans or oh, yes. buying followers. Never, never, never do that. Never, never. Just one more never. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, because it just your your accounts can get banned. You you know if you have any work at all that you put into these, then it's going to go down the drain. So don't right. don't do it. 
Right. It's better to build it and take your time with it because it's about the connections. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you can build faster by putting in some marketing marketing dollars and doing some advertising. You can get really great targeted followers with mm-hmm. Facebook advertising. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, they're great. There's some great ways to do it. And also a lot more engagement. If you want to grow fast, you know, get out there and talk to a lot of people. Right. It's going to take time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what do you have a three step plan for either Facebook or Twitter that people can implement right now from what you've been talking about? Yeah, so I think like, that's a great question. Um, Put you so, on the spot I'm, here. I'm like, wait, do I have three steps? How many steps do I? Well, it can be fun, whatever you have, because <laughs> I know you, you're so great at this. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I mean, I would take a look at we kind of covered some of it already mm-hmm. and these are these are steps that are great to revisit at any time you know because you want to assess where you're at right now you know watch watch your previous growth say you've you know say you've been around for a couple of years watch your previous growth um, and then put in place some of these you know watch the metrics you want to watch so you know understand like what you need to track and then start really tracking things and doing different types of posts watch how they perform Um, there's all kinds of uh, I love I love the Facebook insights that can really tell you a lot about what Facebook what posts are working for you Uh, I also love making sure that you put an activity calendar together so you know, not only an editorial calendar for what kinds of things you're going to post over the week, but also what kinds of activity you're going to do so you're really focusing your time on these sites. So you know that, okay, I have 15 minutes once a week where I am going to go out and comment on a bunch of other pages as my page to increase my visibility. Mm -hmm. Then I have times built into my day where I'm going to go check in on these sites and talk to people, answer, you know, answer, um, people's comments or do a post or I'm also going to my activity is that I am once a week going to set up all my posts for the week and I'm going to schedule them out so I don't have to think about it for the rest of the week. So put your activity calendar together so that you are limiting your time because you can get sucked into a rabbit hole on these Uh, sites. Every single site. (laughs) I know. I know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then, you know, okay, boom, my 15 minutes are up. I'm done and move on to your next task. And then just measure and watch, you know, watch how everything is working for you, um, track your stats and all that kind of thing so you can tweak things and maybe make adjustments and maybe say, you know what, it's time to go a little bigger and do a Facebook ad campaign or a Facebook contest or something else on Twitter or LinkedIn or a bigger effort in one of those sites. That's brilliant. And I love the piece that you're talking about with the activity planner and then being even one step further, being very strategic about maybe pick, would you suggest like the top 10 websites that you want to start interacting with that have your audience and then using that as your plan. And then you know what to do each week. You're not confused because I know, I think we wake up and we're like, what do we do today? Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. go over here. Let's go over here. But if yeah. we have your plan in place. So the metric piece, because um, this is just brilliant on what you're talking about to the next level. What do people need to measure? So obviously, you know, one of the biggest measurements on Facebook is called the the PTAT, the engagement measurement. And that's actually going to be going away over the next um period they're rolling out the new stats that are coming out and they're going to break those out but really what you do want to be measuring is the kind of engagement and connection so you know how many people are listening into your page and how how many people are are um, connecting with you because as people know not every post is seen by right. uh, your audience so you have to be aware of that I know that that's a bit of confusion for some people who are just starting out right. on Facebook they think well I've got a hundred fans all 100 of them have seen this post and, you know, right. I only got one like. And I'm like, no, that, you know, you didn't reach that many people. So, uh, so definitely look at your engagement, look at the, and then compare what your goals are because that's where you have to be measuring. If your goal is traffic, then make sure you have Google Analytics or some sort of analytics on your website to tell you how many visits did you get from Facebook this month. How many, you know, how many, mm-hmm. or this week, or whatever, however often you're tracking. Or if you have, your goal is, I want to grow my email list, you want to know how many people are subscribing that are coming right from Facebook. So put some 
measurements in place, either like a Google goal or uh, something like that, or maybe even a separate landing page where you know that everyone no. who signs up on that landing page came straight from Facebook or one of the social sites or whatever it is. Right. So just, you know, track what you're goals are track what's important to you oh that's brilliant i love it and then diversifying it out so then you can know and to easily track it then it's perfect so what are some uh the future trends that you see in in either with facebook or twitter yeah i mean obviously visual is huge Mm -hmm. and um you know video is still becoming so important with instagram just re of releasing know. their new videos. And I'm not yes. even on Instagram. That was another one where I was like, oh, I just can't do it. But I think I'm going to get into it. I, I Now, are you going to do Instagram or Pinterest? I think I'm going to do Instagram because just because, I mean, Pinterest to me still, I would be like gone for a week. I would <laughs> be uh, ah, interesting. So interesting to me. Um, so, uh, but Pinterest is great for driving traffic. I love it. Yeah. I think I'm just going to take the smaller step that feels a little bit easier for me to and get my toe great. into Instagram. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, visual is still still huge, and just having good visuals is going to be uh, more and more important as we increase our bandwidth on all these sites. We've got our smartphones; we can watch video very easily. Um, mobile obviously is still um, uh, more and more important. I think that you know you're going to just see more sites that are really focused on ways to use your mobile phone with them. So it's, right. it's yeah. Well, and I love the, the visual point of it too. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was Amy Porterfield or Mari Smith that was telling me this, but they're saying that on the mobile phones now, you can actually set your feed to just images, mm. which I didn't even know about. So I thought yeah. that's really intriguing. So it's really important, like you said, and dip your toe into whatever platform yeah. makes more sense to you for you to get started. But um, it yeah. really can grab the eye. Yeah, and and the new um, Facebook uh, feed is the news feed that's going to be coming out. I've seen it a few times. It's much more focused on visual. The pictures yeah. are really large. Um, actually, the you know text is overlaid on the picture, so it's not even as easy to read. Sometimes it's a little. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's okay. gonna be interesting to see how that how that comes out. That will be yeah. It's it's always interesting to see what the next uh, phase is going to be. Yeah. Well, this is this has just been absolutely phenomenal, Andrew. You're giving phenomenal tips and information and steps. Um, the, the last question that I want to ask you is I like to call the five-minute makeover, and it's a million-dollar question. If you had to start all over from scratch today without knowing any of the contacts that you have or having the resources that you have in place and systems in place, what would you do to rebuild your empire? That is a great question. I would start out much earlier focusing a lot more on my email list and building that up because I think your email list is really key. You know, we talk about all these social sites and email still rules when it comes to selling. So I would really focus a lot on, you know, having little freebies, little offers, ways that people can come and connect with me and and join me on my email list. Um, So then as far as building up with um, with some of the other some of the other social sites I think I would still do uh, the same thing. I would try and find a way to be really unique and stand out in some way because I really feel like being unique with the grant with Grandma Mary has been mm-hmm. such a difference because you, you you know you're tapping into something that's that's really different that's shareable that has a story behind it right. and if you can find your own story behind your motivation and what makes you you then you can it's shareable for other people so other people can help share your message so i i would definitely do that as well as just what what I found too is that I would go in and connect with people in a very authentic way and, and not, not trying to say, will you retweet this for me or will you do this for me? Right. But, but like just sharing their stuff and, and commenting on, uh, on it and, and commenting on blog posts and, you know, offering to guest post if they, you know, if they needed a guest post on their site because a lot of the larger sites 
a struggle to find content because they're putting out lots and lots of content. A lot of times right. they're blogging every day, and a lot of people take guest posts and just really making, uh, really focused on making my content awesome. So yeah. that 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 would be how I would how I would restart. So a lot of a lot of similar things from what I did, but like did mm -hmm. before, but really with a focus on the email list. So don't don't neglect your email list. Make sure you're getting people onto it and, and offering some good freebies to entice people to get onto it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. That's brilliant. Well, do you have any other tips that you'd like to share? I think just, you know, don't feel, don't, I mean, I, I say don't feel overwhelmed, cause, but that's negating your feelings. I know you feel overwhelmed sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> to all the people out there, I feel overwhelmed sometimes. Yeah, I, sometimes I'm like, I have not tweeted all day. I can't, uh, you know. <laughs> you have neglect. I know. I know. It, it's like an anxiety a little bit. <laughs> I know. So just, you know, be kind to yourself and, mm -hmm, and realize good. that this is a marathon. It's mm -hmm. not a, it's not a race. Give yourself time to succeed because you will. In the end, you will. So mm -hmm. just keep plugging away. I love it. And Andrea's put together a very special offer that teaches you actually your everything we've talked about today. She's actually outlined in kind of a blueprint for a social media uh, a strategy for success for you. So we'll have that all in the show notes um, where you can download that and get access to it to really start taking action and, and moving forward and implementing this in your business. So this has just been a blast. I thank you so much so for fun. coming on. And yeah, I'd love so to bring you fun, back Chris. in the future. So thanks yeah. again, Andrea. Great. Thank you, Chris. And I hope you enjoyed that episode. I'd love to get your feedback here for the Lifestylepreneur podcast right in iTunes. Simply leave us a five star and a review, letting us know what you like, who you're interested in hearing more from, and what topics you really want help with in your business that I can bring on those key experts to really fine tune and help you in your business and creating the lifestyle of your dreams. And I'll be giving shout outs to make sure you put your name and your website address if you want me to share that with the community as well. And again, thanks for listening. I'm so excited that you found the Lifestyle Preneur podcast and I can't wait to connect with you and learn more about your business as we continue to grow this community. So again, have a great day and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Lifestylepreneur podcast. Again, I'm Chris Gilbertson, and I'm committed to bringing you top training from leading lifestylepreneurs all over the world to help you break through and turn your dreams into your ideal lifestyle. And make sure to join us at www.lifestyleacademy.com to receive VIP training from specific guests I interview on the show so that you can really easily start to implement what you've learned from listening. I know we're all busy and sometimes we don't have time to listen to the entire podcast or take notes because I'm always listening on the go. So I like to call it the lifestyle cliff notes to creating your ideal business and make it really simple for you. So those will be sent via the email list. Plus, I also want to connect with you personally, and being on the Lifestyle Academy mailing list is where all the magic happens. We'll host VIP trainings once a month that we can't always bring out on the podcast with even more detailed information. And I also want to connect with you personally. I want to know what's going on in your business and what you need help with and who I can bring on to aid you in creating your ideal lifestyle. And so I'll be asking questions every once in a while that I want you to reply, and I reply back to you personally. So again, until next time, wishing you on your way to achieving all of your dreams. Talk to you soon.